Duke's Kyle Filipowski is quickly becoming one of my favorite bigs in the 2023 draft, so let's dive into his game. This is floor and ceiling, let's break him down. At just about 7 feet, Kyle Filipowski is as big as many centers, but his skill set and limited athletic profile really means that he projects as a very versatile forward. I want to start with the Duke freshman on the inside, which is both where he's most comfortable right now and where he's got to keep growing. Filipowski is a modern, fluid big who's shown real flashes of being able to put the ball on the floor for spurts. He must keep working on his physicality and strength, more on that later, but I love how Filipowski operates out of behind the backs or spin moves to keep his defender on the back foot. Flip relies on finesse more than assertiveness right now, but he should do this more often. Just lean in, use your size, and finish through the defender. Outside of that, I also enjoy when Filipowski gets to the rack off the ball. He understands when and how to dive from the perimeter, and it helps that he's usually sharing the floor with another big who's drawing the attention inside. Right now, more than half of Filipowski's shots are at the basket, which is awesome. That's exactly what you want. I like this pistol action for Duke in transition. The ball handler, usually Tyrese Proctor, gets a couple of screens from Filipowski and the other big, who tends to be Ryan Young. We're gonna see this twice here, so Young pops to the perimeter, Filipowski dives to the basket, and depending on how the defense plays this, Flip is then capable of punishing the mismatch down low. The Blue Devil freshman's ability to get to the rim is directly linked to his handle. Overall, I like where it's at right now. Some adjustments will eventually happen as I'll get into, however, I generally trust Filipowski when he's got the rock in his hands. You shouldn't be expecting him to handle into a pull-up, but Filipowski can attack the paint through this, and the process is mostly encouraging. Again, he's not gonna burst past you with his first step, but Flip is coordinated and very fluid. He can lift out to the wing or play out of the high post and then he can get inside where he's also able to get to the free throw line. Of course, I want to see some of these near misses just rattle into the hoop instead, but I'm focused on how Flip gets there and I like what I see. Down the line, I think Filipowski is going to be able to grab and go off opponent misses a lot more. He already does this from time to time at Duke, but it makes perfect sense given his strong rebounding, penchant for getting to the rim, and ball handling flashes. As we can see again, Filipowski has that soft touch and grace. Even when he's handling in the open court, it never really looks like he's jetting off to the other side of the floor. I'm all for expanding this part of the 19-year-old's game, but in the future, I also want to see him keep it simple more often. Sometimes the easiest and most efficient bucket is just running hard from rim to rim in a straight line, catching, and finishing. Getting into Filipowski's shooting, it's more about the potential than the numbers. Right now, he's only making about 28% of his threes, but I think we can see that the pieces are there for him to become a solid outside shooter in time. At 7 feet, flip shot usually is not going to get blocked even if his prep and release are not that fast. I trust that he's going to be able to pop to the perimeter and play out of handoffs or dribble handoffs in the future. His high volume from deep shows that there's trust in him here, more on that later. And Flip is also making about 76% of his free throws, so that definitely makes me feel better about his outlook from 3. Filipowski has nice touch, repeatable mechanics which should not drain him physically, and a clean follow through when he holds it. I'm curious to see, either by the time he gets drafted or in a few seasons from now, if Filipowski keeps growing as a shooter off movement. The flashes have been very scarce this season and mostly in transition, but obviously it's really appetizing for a 7-footer to be able to step into these types of shots. As of right now though, I do think Filipowski would benefit from a slightly less focal role on offense. This is probably bound to happen in the NBA no matter what, at least when he first comes in, but Duke really relies on flip right now. He leads the team in minutes and usage by a considerable margin. This was also the case in high school. However, I do think Filipowski struggles to create his own shot right now whenever he's not going to the rim. He's not a shifty ball handler or really a post-up player at this stage. Down low especially, he can still get bumped off his spots. 
And even when the Duke forward scores here, he's not truly getting to the basket. It's more about touch and release points. That's nice, but let's not forget. Flip is 7 feet, 230 pounds. That being said, I'm not too much of a stickler about this. Like sure, I want to see Filipowski do better inside, but I think he's bound to improve there. And he already contributes to his team in many other ways that go beyond scoring. In my opinion, Flip is a really fun player to watch. He's unselfish, never really forces anything, and he's one of those guys who can make all of his team better. I've been blown away by some of his half-court reads this year. Not to mention that these clips are really valuable because they combine so many of his tools. Here, Flip has the smaller guy on him in the post, he backs him down, Purdue brings the triple team, and then this is most likely a 3 in the NBA. In this clip, Flip recognizes that all the attention is on him for just a split second, and makes the simple kick out to a high level 3 point shooter. Quantifying feel in basketball can be tough, so many factors have to be accounted for, but I'm pretty confident that Filipowski has it. Let's break down some film. This one is awesome. Flip makes the defender think with the jab step on the left wing, then he sees the help coming and squeezes in a pass through the tightest of windows. From the same game, Flip gets into the post up using a cross screen from Tyrese Proctor, he's aware of the pressure that arrives and fires the wraparound. Against Purdue, Flip combines his two go-to moves, the quick behind the back and the fluid spin before bouncing in the dump off. This pass to break the zone is less flashy, but look at the reaction time and how quickly Flip gets the ball right into the big's pocket. Time and time again this season, he's been effective making those high-low reads that have long been a Duke staple. As I look towards the NBA, I'm still itching to see Filipowski get more reps as a passer on the short roll. We've seen some of this, or similar, and it's been pretty cool. The first year forward can scan the floor on the move, and then find his teammates. I see no reason why this should not become an even bigger part of Flip's playmaking in the future, when he's got even better spacing and shooters around him to operate with. Yet another way that Filipowski adds value to his team is through his motor. Watch any Duke game and this will pop off the screen. That being said, Flip's ability to make multiple efforts is most apparent on defense like we'll get into, and right now, on the glass. Here, Flip is super competitive, and I love that about him. You might be thinking, well, he's 7 feet, but that doesn't automatically translate to being a strong rebounder. Just look at Jackson Hayes, for example. Filipowski is snatching up about 2.5 offensive rebounds per game, and is also really secure down the other end. To give you an idea, Flip is posting better rebounding numbers than the likes of Keegan Murray or Jeremy Sohan did last season. In his time at Duke, Filipowski has flashed a bit of everything. I'm rightfully intrigued, and he's shooting up my personal big board, but he still has plenty of improvement areas. One of the biggest ones for his overall success is going to have to be the three. There's a lot of debate about what truly constitutes a stretch big in the NBA, like if you're making your shots and no one is contesting, how valuable truly is that? But I'm always of the belief that making threes, even if wide open, adds up over time. As I said earlier, Filipowski takes trays right now. He takes more per 100 possessions than Miles Turner or Nas Reed did in college, for example, but they have to go in more often. 28% is not gonna cut it. If a hard, disciplined closeout forces him to shoot instead of attack, Flip is guilty of rushing his mechanics and eventual shots. Also, he's not that versatile, so I want to stress, I don't think any Laurie Markkinen comparisons are accurate. At this stage of his development, most of Flip's makes from deep don't have that much substance to them. Really, this is fine, as I've been saying, Flip's not the type of guy to create his own shot off the dribble, and most of his 3-pointers should be kept to easy ones. About 9 in 10 of his makes are assisted. But really, it's just that Filipowski has to make these shots. If not, the lanes to pass or drive become a lot narrower, and so does his overall game. Because honestly, you want the Duke forward to be able to do two things. Shoot the three ball and score at the basket. We've seen the flashes, but both of these areas need to become more consistent. Filipowski takes a ton of shots at the rim, but he only makes about 56% of them. Also, he's attempted just 15 dunks all season. 
For comparison, Derek Lively is at 33 dunks despite playing about 400 less minutes. In particular, we know Flip can attack a closeout, but then he's gotta convert. He's not frail at 230 pounds, but he does have limitations to his athletic profile. The wingspan, set to be about 6'11", 7 feet, is a big one. It's even to his height, and this lack of length can hurt Filipowski in traffic. Even though we know about his motor, Flip can't help but get blocked on the second jump here. So even though Filipowski is really skilled, you cannot write off this concern. At the end of the day, the NBA has the best athletes in the basketball world. The lack of length, like we've seen, can hurt Filipowski's finishing, but I also think his overall lack of burst can hinder his handle and how he gets to his spots. For example, I wonder how much can you use him as a lob catcher in this situation? Without being on the court, it's tough, but I wish he'd have called for the alley-oop here instead of the bounce pass that ends as a turnover. If you've never watched him play before, then I do think the Duke forward can take you aback on this end. In a great way, though. Duke's game against Kansas really showed this off. Watch how he switches onto Jalen Wilson here, stays parallel to the drive, and ends up forcing the miss. Against a smaller guard, Flip doesn't mind defending in space, and Duke doesn't mind putting him in this position. He gets some help here, but I like Flip fighting over the screen and staying in front. This last one is my favorite. The 7-footer helps on the drive, covers ground with the under control closeout, and then he has the balance and footing to backslide on the new drive and force the pass off. Filipowski's defensive awareness has also stood out. Something he's been great at this season is spotting back cuts. We just saw that happen twice here against NC State. This one against Kansas is great also. Flip tags the roller, recovers to his man, and doesn't let himself get back cut. It's sort of similar at the start of the game, other side, but Flip again tags the roller, recovers on the skip to the corner, and forces the pass off. In another great example of Flip's defensive value, he's under control guarding the pick and pop, easily stays with the drive, and gets the steal. Filipowski can get bullied down low. This is less of a problem in the NBA, but what I do worry about is this right here. Twice against NC State, Filipowski just got totally tossed out of the way by Terquavion Smith. Smith is good, but he's 165 pounds soaking wet, and he just manhandled the much, much bigger flip. Also, Filipowski is one of those 7-footers who is not really that aware or sturdy protecting the rim. Again, I don't know that this is a huge issue. I see Flip as a forward who can play the 4 and the 5, but who's always going to be better next to an actual rim protector. So sure, maybe that means another 7-footer like Derek Lively at Duke, but Flip would also make sense next to a PJ Tucker or Jared Vanderbilt type. The good news is that Filipowski is not a non-factor here. Flip is 7 feet tall, so that alone gives him more presence than say someone who's 6 foot 6 and has similar flaws. Not just that, but it's also the motor that I've lauded. Flip loves to compete, so he's still gonna make a difference. But let's not forget about his discipline and footwork either. The process is not always perfect, but Flip's capacity to slide his feet and stay on balance are crucial. They allow Flip to stay parallel or in front, and then he's big enough to just about make attackers uncomfortable around the baskets. I've broken down Kyle Filipowski's game at length, so I'ma keep this brief, but as you can see, I'm a big fan of him. I think the shooting is real, I buy into it long term, even though the 28% right now definitely has to improve. He's got volume at the rim, and definitely needs to become more physical, more assertive, and he's not going to be a plus athlete there, but I love the competitiveness, I love the fire, he's got a great motor that shows up on both ends. On defense, you're not going to want Filipowski to protect the rim, so he's not really a traditional 5 in that regard, he's definitely more of a forward. 
but with everything that he's got there, the mobility, the feel, the instincts, I'm not sure that he's switchable, but he will be able to hold his own in space. Overall, I'm a big fan of Kyle Filipowski's game, and I would consider picking him as early as the late lottery, or at least, definitely, in the top 20. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Kyle Filipowski, and if you enjoy the channel, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.